And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a man's search for the murderer of his brother. We call it A Killing in Abilene. So now, starring Parley Bear, here is tonight's suspense play, A Killing in Abilene. I'd come down out of the Snake Range that morning, had followed the river trail through the canyon, and that afternoon had found Pleasant Valley. A handful of buildings, desolate, huddled in the cold shadows of the mountains around, tall and dark. A quarter of a mile this side of town, on an easy rise, I saw a handful of people standing in a circle. As I got closer, I saw they were gathered around two men who were digging. It's him, all right. I seen his shirt. You was right then, Ben. Let the sheriff take a look. Yeah. yeah. Jake. Jake Garvey. Yeah. That's him. That's Fred Carson, all right. Fred! What are you doing here, stranger? Where are you from? You the sheriff? That's right. Jake Garvey. Manders, my name, from Abilene. So? I'm looking for a man in these parts who calls himself Lee Burridge. Who'd he say, sheriff? He said Lee Burridge, Ben. You come along with us, mister. We'll find him for you. What do you want him for? What's it matter what he wants him for? We know what we want him for. Come on. There ain't going to be no trouble. I'm the law in Pleasant Valley. I'll do what we say. With Fred Carson laying cold and his widow weeping, that's trouble enough. We elected you, Sheriff Jake. We can unelect you. Like Ben said, it was Burridge killed him and you know it. I've got to talk to you about Burridge, Sheriff. It's important. All right. My office, back of the meeting house. We don't need no talk about Burridge. We need to do something about the ugly son. Come on, boys. Let's get on back to town. We'll take her as she comes. Smoke? No, thanks. The boys want to know why you're here. So do I. I'll tell you, we don't like strangers. What do you want with Lee Burridge? I had a brother. He was killed out in Abilene. Burridge did it. Oh? Uh-huh. Him and another one drove a herd into the railroad. Burridge got drunk and killed my brother. Buried him. Same as here. We found this pouch near the grave. His name burned into it. Hmm. It's taken me two years to find him. Now I want to talk to him about it. The boys are pretty sure he killed Fred Carson, too. So am I now. Maybe so. Fred Carson isn't my business. My brother is. And I want to see his killer back in Abilene standing trial. I made a promise I'd bring him back. How? You don't look like the kind of a man who could use a gun. Now, look. We didn't know your brother. But we knew Fred and we liked him. We can help take care of Burridge here if you've got a mind to. 
try him here, you mean, on both charges? No need for that. Then what do you mean, take care of him? How did he kill your brother? His head was beating. He was beat to death. Yeah. Same as he did to Fred. A man who'd do a thing like that don't need no trial. Not for you, maybe. But there'll be no more killing in my family. We'll give him a fair trial in Abilene. If Burry's done these killings, he's going to pay for it here. I don't go for lynching. That's strong talk. We don't call it lynching when we hang a man for murder. If you don't like it, go on back to Abilene. Maybe I'll do that. When I take Lee Burridge out for trial. I don't know what you're trying to do. I suspect it's to get Burridge out of town. If I'm right, you're heading into a lot of trouble. One of you boys direct me to where Lee Burridge lives? Good, if we felt inclined. What you want with him? Just want to talk. Anybody got any objections? Yeah. Who are you? Ben Chaffee. There ain't going to be no talking. He's done what he's done. He's going to pay for it. And nobody's going to stand in the way. It's time he was riding out of here. And if I don't? Then I'll help you. Climb off, Ben. We don't need no private wars here. Huh. Where does he live? Come on, boys. They turned away from me and moved into the sheriff's office, leaving me alone to walk down the dusty street. I asked the blacksmith where Lee Burridge lived. He just looked at me and shook his head. Towards the hills, the thunderhead was beginning to gather, moving in slowly. Near the end of the street, two men were building a coffin in front of a small house. Is this where I'll find Mrs. Costin? Why do you have to come meddling around here at a time like this? Can't you leave a widow to her sorrow? Because he's a stranger, Bob boy. And strangers don't have no time for other people's sorrow. Maybe you're right, old timer. Maybe they got too many of themselves. Yes? I'd like to talk to you, ma'am. Could I come in? No. Can't you see this house is in mourning? My friends are making a coffin for Fred's decent burial. I got nothing to say to you. Ma'am, I know how you feel. How can you know how I feel? I had a brother once killed by this man buried. Oh. I'd like you to help me. It was two years ago my brother was killed. His wife would like the killer brought back to Abilene for trial. I'd like you to speak to your friend. Let me take him away. He didn't give my Fred a chance before he killed him. He's a cruel and ugly man. I want him killed. Here, where I can watch. Will you tell me where he lives? Don't tell him nothing, Mrs. Carson. He'll go warn him off. Let him go if he wants. I say a man's got one life to live, and he's got a right to lose it any dang way he pleases. I'll tell you where you can find Lee Burridge. On the way, I passed the open pit that had been a grave and turned up a side canyon. A few miles farther on where the canyon spread, I saw his hut set against a fire-blackened hill. There was no growing thing in the rocky ground except one sick, twisted tree, its stunted limbs reaching out, empty, waiting. Oh, oh, oh easy, easy. Oh. Throw your gun down, you, or I won't miss with the next one. Lee Burridge? Throw it down! I'm Jeff Mander. 
It was my brother Seth you killed in Abilene. If that's who you are, you've caused me enough trouble. Now get out of here. They'll give you a fair trial there. Stay here and you're going to be lynched for Fred Costin's killing. Nobody's going to lynch me while I got this. Don't come no closer. You listen to me. I don't hold no love for you. I shouldn't care what happens to you. But it took me two years to find you. Now I'm taking you out. Don't come no closer. Put up your gun. I'm warning you. Put up your gun. All right, now get And tell those folks in the village it didn't work. I'm too smart for them. Timer. I see you had your talk with Burridge. You see? He ain't wearing your gun. You get the drop on you? Yeah. Surprised he didn't kill you. So was I. Did you tell him I'd gone there? Yep. What'd they say? They said if you get Burridge first, they'd get you. They said you should go back where you come from while you still can. I will. After I settled with Burridge. Where's the sheriff? Went off with the boys. After Burridge? Yeah. Gonna wait till dark. Then they're gonna bring him up. Where are they gonna wait till dark? I want to be with him. I thought you didn't like lynching. I don't, but I want to be there. I was told if you came back to town, you have to be with him. Now don't make me use this gun, son. Now just turn around and we'll join the rest of them. All right. And I'd suggest you stop your talking about Lee Burridge. From what I overheard, you're close to sharing a rope with him. to A Killing in Abilene, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Fires are easier to prevent than to extinguish. If you want to make sure you don't have a fire in your own home, now's the time to get fire sighted. If you can't make your own electrical repairs, get an electrician in to check the house especially if it's been a while since your wiring's had any attention. And throw out piled-up rubbish. Be fire-sighted. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage, Parley Bear, starring in tonight's production of A Killing in Abilene, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. rode out of Pleasant Valley, the old man, and up speaking through scattered herds of cattle on the lower rangeland. Rolling in from the east, the black cloud smothered the mountain top. The old man still held the gun on me. Oh, no use winding the horses. Won't be dark for a couple hours yet. Lynching parties get their guts after dark. How come you weren't with them? Waiting for you. I thought you'd be around. Besides, I seen a lynching once. So much trouble. Yeah. You still figuring to take Burge with you to Abilene? I can try. Ain't that going to be a mite daring without a shooting iron? Might be. I'm surprised after two years looking for him, you, you didn't shoot him when you found him. That's not what I come for. Why not? He killed your brother. I made a promise to somebody. His wife? Yes. And mine, too. What was it between Costin and Burridge? I don't know. Nobody's seen much of Burridge in the past couple of years. Ever since Ben told us about how he was a killer. Ugly man. Guess it was your brother he killed, too. I guess so. Now, because of him, you might get killed. Why? They know you're trying to take Burridge away. Oh, well, we, we poured the stream here. What's your foot? Johnny. Yeah? They haven't 
seen you yet. You still got time to get out. You'd let me go? Seen a lynching once. Started a lot of trouble. I've come this far. I'll finish it. Hello, Sheriff. Thought you'd left Pleasant Valley. I told the old man to bring him. We decided he ought to be with us where we can watch him. We're not letting him take Burge out. You decided, Ben? What do you say, mister? Are you still going to try and take him? I'll tell you what he says, Sheriff. He says he wants Burge one way or the other. He has to join, that's what he says. Shut up, old man. Get off the horse, mister. All right. I want Burridge as bad as the rest of you. I'd prefer him to stand trial. That's the difference. I don't want this lynching. You... Take your hand off your gun, Ben. He ain't armed. Now take it easy, Ben. We decided what to do. You're here because I want you here. Burridge killed Fred Custon in a fight. Now we're going to settle it. Burridge kills easy. I've seen him do it once before. He's not going to do it again. You saw him kill my brother? I saw it. You need more of a trial than that? I thought of the ugly man up the canyon in the broken-down shack. I wondered if he knew what was waiting for him a mile or so away. It was quiet then. The storm clouds were quickening the end of day, and the party became shadowed, sitting nervously or smoking. Two of the men had some whiskey and were building up their courage for the night's work. It's, it's nearly dark. What? Wow. I didn't think you'd come. I had to. My Fred's dead. So's my brother. My Fred was a good man. Never hit me. But he was a dark man with drink. What was it between Burridge and him? Well, we lost some chickens. Fred said that Burridge stole them. When he came to town for supplies, Fred and him got to fighting. Burridge hated him and beat him. Fred was horrible hurt. Afterwards, everybody laughed and made jokes. They laughed at their friend? Oh, it, it was man laughing. No harm. But to a dark man like Fred, it was bad. He swore to get even. That was last Saturday. He went in to drink... And didn't come back? We all thought he rode out someplace for shame. Why do you think Burridge killed him? Oh, they was all talking about it. Who was? All the men, Saturday night. They said Fred and that man is arguing. Who heard that? Ben did. And when Fred didn't come back, we all knew that man had killed him. Well, he did. And he's going to pay for it. Who found the grave, ma'am? Ben did. I... I'm sorry for your brother's wife, but... It must be this way. It's like the holy book says, an eye for an eye. Let's go, boys. It's time. He's there right enough. There's a light inside. Hold up, boys. Stop. You, Jim, and Needle, come with me. We'll bring him up. The rest of you stay here. What's the idea? You're too quick tonight. Ben and given too many orders. You stay. You still going to try and get him away, son? I might. <laughs> You're like an engine I knew once. Had to shoot him five times before he knew he was dead. What do you want here? You know what we want, Burridge. Get out of here. Get off my land. You come outside quiet like we don't want no trouble. I ain't asking for trouble. You asked for it when you killed Fred Custon. Killed him? I didn't kill Custon. Save your breath while you got it. Come on. Let go. Let go of me. I'll kill you. I'll kill you all, Rudy. You've done your last killing. Get the rope over that limb. Right. Is this your doing, Ben? Shut up. Tie his hands, Bob. I'll hold him. You 
going to blame this one on me too, Ben. Shut up, I said. Bridge didn't do it. He didn't do it. Let it go, son. You can't stop him now. I got to talk to him before they do it. He didn't kill. I know it. Wait a minute. Take my gun. Thanks. The rope was around his neck, and he knew he was going to die. But as I came near him and could see him in the light, there was no fear in his eyes. He was lifted onto the horse, the rope was tightened, and he was ready to be lynched. Then he saw me. One request, Sheriff. What, Burridge? Let me talk to him a minute. The stranger here? For a minute. No more talking. Take that horse out from under him. Not yet. Let him talk. Take it out! We don't want to kill the wrong man, Ben. You or Burridge. Let him talk. Why do you think I killed your brother? They're trying to get away with something, Jake. Let's string them up. Come on. A minute don't matter. Get up, Ben. Let them have their say. We found your pouch near my brother's grave, Burridge. Your name on it. And tonight Ben told me he saw you kill him. I didn't. I wasn't with Ben that night in Abilene. Ben wanted to drink. I didn't. He, he left me and took my pouch with him. What does it matter about his brother? It's Fred Costin we're hanging him for. I didn't kill Fred Costin either. Listen, mister, I didn't kill your brother. Ben told everybody I didn't ever since I've had no friends here. He's talked enough. He killed Fred Costin. I told you that. What about Burridge? I didn't kill Fred Costin. He's lying. Let's get it over with. I say let him talk. Where'd you get that gun, mister? How'd you know where Fred was buried, Ben? How'd you know where Fred was buried? Miss Costin says you found the grave. How'd you know where it was? Answer him, Ben. You told me where it was, Ben. I saw him burying poor Fred. That's how I knew. If you saw the burial, why didn't you stop Burridge then? It wasn't none of my business. But it is now. What made you change your mind so fast? Stay away from that horse, Ben. Get, get up. Cut him down. You, Bob, cut him down. I think you'll be coming back to Abilene with me, Ben. You think so? You all right, son? My shoulder. Uh, How about Bridge? Oh, he'll live. Rest easy, son. You've done a good job. But you ain't going to keep your promise about your brother's killer. There's no sense taking Ben Chaffee back to Abilene. We'll bury him here. Suspense, in which Parley Bear starred in A Killing in Abilene by Anthony Ellis and Gil Dowd. Next week, the story of a man who thought the only way to escape death was to search for it. It's called Diagnosis of Death. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis. The music was composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in the cast were Paula Winslow, Jack Crucian, Frank Gerstle, Jim Nusser, Vic Perrin, Joe Duvall, and Will Wright. Listen for the Radio Hall of Fame every Sunday night on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>